All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover section 15.3 from Stewart's Calculus Early Transcendentals 8th edition. This is the last section we'll cover in Math 2D. Um, so if you take Math 2E at UCI, you'll cover on, you'll still, you might start with the section in, in that in that quarter, but you'll continue on chapter 15 with this doing more integration theory in multi -var multiple variables. But anyway, this is the last one. So we want to do double integrals in polar coordinates. So First, let's just do a little bit of a review. So if we have a point in the plane, right? Just you have your, your plane, whether it's Cartesian or polar. If you have the polar coordinates of that point, r theta, and you also look at the Cartesian coordinates, x, y, how are those related? So we did this already in chapter 10. I don't know why we, we should just wait until now to do this. But anyway, um, but you remember the r squared. Remember, how is, what is r theta? So it's just to remind ourselves really fast here. If you have a point over here, if this is the point given by r and theta, r is the distance from the sort of origin to that point, and theta is the angle that that sort of line segment from the origin to that point would make with the positive x-axis. Okay. So uh, again, the r then is related to x and y by r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and the x-coordinate is given by r cosine theta, and y is given by r sine theta. You'll notice I can divide y divided by x, and that tells me that y over x could be given by tangent theta as well here. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this very particular kind of region. So suppose we have a region in the plane r1 like this. So it's r theta, the r is between 0 and 1, and uh, theta is between 0 and pi. So Remember, theta being between 0 and pi means it basically goes from, this would be theta equals 0, and then theta equals pi would be points over here. So that would be just a, a full half circle. R between 0 and 1, right, means that the distance from the origin is between 0 and 1. So what we get here then is we get, if this is the from negative 1 to 1, we actually get the upper half of the unit circle centered at the origin, right? We get this not a perfect picture here but that's what we get okay so it would be that whole region and then I guess I should shade that that whole thing so it would look like this okay sorry if you're getting a lot of background noise there's a truck parked outside my apartment um, unfortunately I don't have a lot of time to record these videos so I'm gonna have to let it live um, so yeah, yeah. So notice any point in here, right? It's it's r is between zero and one, right? And any point in here, if you draw a line segment to the origin, the angle that line segment makes is going to be between zero over here and pi over here. And then the same thing for r two. So this was one, and over two will do two. Okay, now the theta is now between 0 and 2 pi. So that's an entire, any point can be anywhere. If you draw a, a line segment from the origin to your points in R2, it can be, that angle can be anywhere from between 0 and 2 pi. So it can go a whole 360 degrees around the origin. And then R is between 1 and 2. So if you have, say, 1 here and 2 here, what does this look like? Well, it's going to look like the following. So any point that's sort of between these two circles with radius one and radius two will be in our set R2. Okay, oops, that's terrible. Okay, so anything in here, right, it's, it's R is between zero and one or sorry, one and two, I should say, not zero and one. That's the last one. And its angle that it makes that if you take a line segment from the point to the origin, that angle between the that and the positive x-axis has to be between zero and two pi, and that's just basically every point within a full 360 degrees of the origin, okay? So that's what this whole set looks like. It's basically an, an annulus. It should be just the area it's the region between the circles with radius 1 and radius 2. So if I were to draw this out, right, this would be a circle x squared plus y squared equals 4, a circle with radius 2, and this one here would be x squared plus y squared equals 1. So it's all the region between those two. 
up here, right, this would be the upper half x squared plus y squared equals one, and then the y coordinates have to be greater than zero. Okay. So these are general regions. I mean, this is a this is a type we call a type one region, right? The x is between negative one and one, and this upper half of this circle is given by, for instance, uh, y equals the square root of one minus x squared, right? So you could think of it as like, it's all the points, this is like a, a general region that you could integrate over. X is between negative one and one. The uh, uh, Y is between zero and this upper function, okay? Um, this would be a little bit harder to do that way, but anyway, this one for sure can be written as a sort of a general region like we did in 15.2. Okay, so the sets that look like this in general, if you have all the points R and theta, so if the R coordinate is between two numbers and the theta coordinate is between two numbers, they're called polar rectangles. Because why, why are they a polar rectangle? Well, if you sort of ignored what this point represented in the plane, like how you think of where this point exists based on what these two numbers are, R and theta, this would just be a rectangle, right? If, if these were just X and Ys, this is a rectangle. So if instead of having the X axis and the Y axis, if you just had like the R axis and the theta axis, this would give you a rectangle in that sort of R theta space where you weren't looking really at R and theta as polar coordinates, but just as Cartesian coordinates in, in that sense. So, you know, a natural thing is, well, what if we have a polar rectangle like this? Can we integrate over it? Can we, if we have a function f of x and y, where f, and x, f of x and y, this is a function of two Cartesian coordinates, right, of x and y, and suppose I have something like this. Can I integrate over this? Because if you go back and look over here, this is a general region, right? We could do this. We could try this problem. If we had a function f, we could integrate over this region. We have all the information we need from section 15.2. We could do it. So I guess the question is, is there an easier way that we could integrate a function over something like that? And the answer is yes. So how do you do it? Basically, you take this polar rectangle like this, right? And you just partition, just kind of like we did the double integral in 15.1. You partition this interval here from A to B into equal length subintervals. And this, in, this interval from alpha to beta into equal length subintervals. And what you get is you get little polar rectangles, right? These aren't rectangles that have equal area, but um, the they basically have the same angles sort of width and the same R width, if that makes any sense. So, you know, and then you can just sort of go from here. And if you work out the, the Riemann sum, I'm not going to do it here because, I mean, whatever. It's in the book if you're really interested, though. But as you go through, okay, well, so just, you know, again, same thing. Look at volumes and blah, blah, blah you end up with the following. So if you have a function f, which is continuous on a polar rectangle r, which is all of the points where the r is between a and b, and the theta is between alpha and beta, and we don't wanna notice that the, the difference in, in beta minus alpha here has to be between zero and, and two pi. We don't wanna have, we don't wanna, we don't wanna go over the same region twice. Like if, if this was bigger than two pi, what that would mean would be is, it would mean this polar rectangle would actually overlap with itself, right? If you think about going from zero to two pi, you're going all the way around and then further. But what you get is that the, if you have this polar rectangle like this, the double integral of f over this general region is can be given by an iterated integral from a to b, f of r cosine theta, r sine theta, r dr d theta. Note the r here. There's a, we pick up a factor of r when we do this. So obviously you can just convert x and y into their polar coordinates, right? So x is r cosine theta y is r sine theta, but you also have to pick up this factor of r here. And so, and then you just integrate over the limits of r and theta. Let's look at an example. All right, so let's evaluate this function. Uh, this is the double integral over r of three x plus four y squared dA, where r is the region in the upper half plane bounded by the circles x squared plus y squared equals one and x squared plus y squared equals four. Okay, so this is actually half of the region we had back here, right? Um, it's, it's like the upper half of this region. So really, it's just going to be, because this is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So really, it's just going to be this polar rectangle, but you're going to let theta not go from 0 to 2 pi. If you want the upper half, right, it's the, it's the part of this, it's, it says uh, the region in between these two circles where where you're in the upper half plane 
So that's where theta is going to be between 0 and pi. So we can write our polar region R. We can write R as a polar rectangle. It's R and theta such that, again, R is between 1 and 2, right? This is the circle with radius 1, circle with radius 2. And since it's in the upper half plane, theta should be between 0 and pi, not between 0 and 2 pi. And so if I just use this formula now, the double integral over r of 3x plus 4y squared dA is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi, integral from 1 to 2, 3 times r cosine theta plus 4 times r cos or sorry r sine theta squared oops sorry uh, r dr d theta okay Sorry, if it looks like I'm, I'm getting really close together at the end there, it's, I'm reaching the edge of my iPad, my tablet, and but it doesn't look like it, <laughs> which is weird, but anyway. Um, anyway, so if we work this out, you're integrating with respect to r first. This is an easier integral than it looks like. So it's the integral from 0 to pi, the integral from 1 to 2. What we get here is we get uh, 3r cosine theta. Oops, that should be r squared cosine theta because it's, it's r times, it's whole thing times r. Uh, plus 4r squared, r cubed, sorry, sine squared theta, dr d theta. And if you integrate that with respect to uh, r first, you're going to get the following. You're going to get the integral from 0 to pi. You're going to get... Um, you're gonna get uh, r three r cubed over three, so it's gonna be r cubed cosine theta uh, plus um, four r to the fourth over four, so r to the fourth sine squared theta. Uh, evaluated from r goes from one to two d theta. Uh, if you work this out, if you evaluate that, you're going to get the integral from 0 to pi of 7 cosine theta plus 15 sine squared theta d theta. Now, this isn't a terribly difficult integral, but how do you do the sine squared? You just use the fact that sine squared theta is just 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. It's the half angle identity. And so what you end up with here is you're going to get that this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of 7 cosine theta plus what you guys get 15 over 2, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta d theta. And if you find the antiderivative, you're going to get 7. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. Plus, you're going to get 15 over 2 theta, right? Uh, minus, if you take the antiderivative of negative uh, cosine 2 theta, it's negative two sine of 2 theta over 2. So you're going to get 15 over 4 sine of 2 theta from 0 to pi. And um, when you integrate this from, when you integrate both of these, right, at pi or at zero, no matter which one you pick, you're going to get zero. So really, you just get 15 over 2 uh, times pi is your answer. Right? If you plugged in either theta equals pi or theta equals sine into either one of these two terms, you get zero for both of them. So that's it. All right, let's do another example. So find the volume of the solid bounded by the plane uh, y equals 0 and the paraboloid z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So if we draw a picture here, z equals 0 is the xy plane. So what does that paraboloid look like? Well, if you draw, it's when, when z is equal to 0, right? when it intersects the xy plane, you get a circle with radius 1, right? Because if z is equal to 0, you can just add x squared plus y squared to both sides. You get x squared plus y squared equals 1. 
And so what you get is when z when um, x and y are both zero, you get one up here. So what you get is you get something that looks like this. So it's a paraboloid, right? It opens down. Okay, but it looks like that. So really, what you're doing is you're integrating this function f of x y um, uh, equals one minus x squared minus y squared over the region which is a circle in the plane. So if you're polar rectangle here was r theta, the r would be between 0 and 1, and the theta would be between 0 and 2 pi. So that's that, that's that disk of radius 1 centered at the origin in the xy plane. And then we just want to integrate this function over that disk, right? So uh, we're going to get the double integral over r of 1 minus x squared minus y squared dA, it's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus, if I, x is r cosine theta, it's going to be r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta, and that whole thing should be multiplied by r. Don't forget the r. When you change dA into dr, dr d theta, basically, the way to remember this is that dA, if you have dA, it becomes r dr d theta. Not just dr d theta, but r dr d theta. Okay? And then from here, this is actually pretty straightforward. You just factor out the uh, r squared from those two terms. You get um, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1. You get 1. Factor out the r, negative r squared from, from these two terms here. You get minus r squared times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta times r. And in fact, we could just multiply that r through if we wanted to. So this actually becomes um, r times r cubed. dr d theta, right? So all I did was multiply that r into these terms here. And then, of course, by the Pythagorean identity, right, this is just 1. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. We get r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth over 4. Uh, evaluated from r goes from 0 to 1. So we get 1 half minus 1 fourth, so that's just 1 fourth. So we get 1 fourth, the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. So if we integrate that, we just get 1 fourth times 2 pi, so we get uh, pi over 2. That's it. Sorry. Move my chair here. So we just get pi over 2 there. Okay? And that's it. So, you know, none of these, you could do these without converting to polar coordinates because that disk is actually like, um, that disk is actually like a type 1 region, right? I could have written the disk as you know, the disk R, I wrote it as a polar rectangle on the previous slide, but I could have written it as all of the X and Y coordinates such that the X is between negative one and one, and the Y coordinate is between negative root one minus X squared, and the positive root. And so that integral would actually also be equal to you could do it like this, the integral from negative one to one, the integral from negative square root of one minus x squared, the positive root one minus x squared, of one minus x squared minus y squared dy dx. Okay, so you could have written it that way. You could also do it as a type two region. It's actually a disk is a both type one and type two. Um, I'll let you figure out how to write it with a type two region. But you can try the integral from here and it's not, uh, trying to think if this is going to be easy to do. Try it yourself, see what happens. I don't think it's necessarily impossible, but I think it might be challenging comparatively to the previous one. If you notice that when we have a polar rectangle one here, this all works out kind of nicely, right? Um, the cosine squared plus sine squared just kind of go away. It works out, you know, to be pretty simple to do. There's nothing challenging to integrate in this. If you do it this way, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So anyway, it's worth understanding these polar coordinates, though, just to be able to convert to something that's easier to integrate. 
And of course we can have more general polar regions. So for instance, here's an example of a function. This is a, a polar region, a general polar region D. So all of the points are theta, so that the theta is between alpha and beta, but the R lies between two functions of theta. So it lies between H1 of theta and H2 of theta. And sort of just like last time, if I want to integrate a function of x and y, so f of x and y over this region D, I get an iterated integral. It's the integral from alpha to beta, and then the integral from h1 of theta to h2 of theta, and again, f of r cosine theta, r sine theta, r dr d theta. So again, note that just like before, though, there's no difference. Okay, dA changes to d r dr d theta. Okay? If you basically change from dA or from dx dy, it's going to change to r dr d theta, not just dr d theta, but r times dr d theta. Okay? All right, let's do uh, one last example here. So let's use a double integral to find the area enclosed by one loop of the four leaf rows. Uh, I have this written down correct and correctly. It's, it's, um, should be not two cosine theta, it should be cosine of two theta. So we graphed this um, picture, we graphed this when we talked about polar coordinates uh, earlier in the quarter, I think in section 10.3, I might be wrong about that one. It's in chapter 10 though. We graphed this, it was a little challenging to graph, but if you remember, the graph looks like uh, this. Um, and so let's just make sure we change this back into cosine of two theta here. Graph looks like that. So um, remember we trace out, if I wanna find the area enclosed by one of the loops, we can just use any of the loops, but it's easiest to just use the first one. This loop is traced as theta goes from negative pi over four to pi over four, right? Cause this, this line right here is negative pi over four. As we go from negative pi over to four to pi over four, we trace out this loop. So we can write this polar region D, if I call this D, we can write it out as all of the points are theta, so that the theta is between zero and pi over four. And the R, well, it's not as obvious here, but the R has to be positive but less than cosine of two theta. So R is between zero and cosine of two theta, just like that. And so if I wanna find the, the area of this region, I really just have to integrate. Remember, if I just integrate one dA over D, that's gonna give me the area of D, okay? So this is the area of D here. And so change this into polar coordinates. This is gonna become an iterated integral. It's gonna be the integral from negative pi over four, that's gonna be the limits for theta. And then the integral from zero to cosine of two theta. And then dA changes into r dr d theta. And so we can integrate that pretty, pretty easy. We get that. So r becomes r squared over two evaluated from r goes from zero to r goes to cosine of two theta, d theta. And if we do that, we get the following. We get, um, let's put the one half out here. We're gonna get cosine squared of two theta, d theta, okay? Now I, I have cosine squared of two theta. How do I integrate that? We use the half angle. So if you have cosine squared of x, this is gonna be one half times one plus cosine of two x. So notice when I go from cosine squared to here, right, with just a power of cosine to the first power, I have to double the angle. So it's gonna be one half cosine, one plus cosine of four theta. So what you end up getting here Oops, let me just keep using black pen. What you get here is you get one half, you're gonna get another one factor of one half, you're gonna get one fourth, the integral from negative pi over four to pi over four. Um, uh, one plus cosine of four theta d theta. Uh, and uh, if you take the, well, so actually a nice thing here is this is actually, um, this is actually an even function. Cosine of four theta is even, one is even, so their sum is an even function. So you can really write this as one half 
times the integral from zero to pi over four, one plus cosine of four theta d theta. And the antiderivative of that's gonna be one half, it's gonna be theta uh, plus sine of four theta over four from zero to pi over four. If you plug in zero there, you just get zero. If you plug in uh, pi over four, you get zero for sine and you get uh, pi over four for theta. So you just get one half times pi over four, which is pi over eight. And that's it. Okay, so uh, this section, it's not too hard. It's, it's mostly just understanding how to write polar regions. Um, if you were good at that, then you'll be fine at this. So, um, you know, practice this stuff, but it's not too bad. All right, anyway, that's it. So that's the entirety of uh, Math2D. So if you're in my Math2D class, um, you know, feel free to, if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop me a line or, uh, you know, ask in class. But uh, in any case, uh, this, is, this is the entirety of Math2D. So if you're going to Math2E, good luck with that. And, um, you know, take care. Have a good one.